Hi guys, welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you my four step guide to becoming a better solo PvE player. Now, we're doing this on the backdrop to a Shattered Throne. This is a solo flawless. I'm doing about 21 minutes. So this video is going to kind of cover the main points of each thing as efficiently and quickly as I can. If you want to see this in more detail, let me know in the comments. Leave a like on the video, all the usual good stuff. And that lets me know that you would like to see each step in, well, I think there's three more videos that could be made for three of the steps. It lets me know you want to see them in more detail with examples and, you know, synergies and what have you. But if this is all you need, then my job here is done and I am happy with that. I've been soloing stuff in games since, jeez, a long, long time ago. Uh, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 1. Uh, when I first wanted to beat Infinity Ward's scores on Spec Ops and Modern, War Modern Warfare 2, it's the first time I, I, I took on a mission. And these these points that I'm going to be making in this video, uh, most of them started there. And then with games like Borderlands and what have you, uh, and then Destiny 1, we continued it and fine-tuned it. So you guys seem to enjoy the guide, so this is a kind of a peek behind the curtains on how I go about formulating the character, the subclass, the weapons, the strategy. And make no mistake about it, I use this in nearly every piece of content I do, whether it be solo or in a raid or whatever. So, the first thing you need to start with is you need to know the encounter you're going to face. Now, what we're doing this is if we're, I'm taking you on, on on a, a journey as if we're, we're, we're specking out to do a solo Grandmaster, right? It could be any Grandmaster. Knowing the encounter, knowing what you're going to face, the enemies, the encounter, the way the encounter plays, it's key because you can't do any of the other plan until you know what you're going to be facing. So let's just say we're talking about this week's GM. Everything is kind of close quarters until you get to the boss and it's a little bit of range. Uh... Ads that can throw things at you, exploder ads, heavy duty ads, but it's all close quarters. The burn matched uh, totally, almost what the damage that all the ads do. That that was all part of the thinking when I come up with the subclass, because your subclass, which we'll get into later, uh, was my subclass was key in there. But having an idea how the enemies performed. Right? So if it's it's fallen, you know that if they take heavy duty damage, they're going to try and hide. Whereas Vex don't really do that. Vex don't go away and hide. Uh, and then if you're dealing with Vex, then you go through the, the ranks of the Vex enemies. You know that once you get to uh, Wyverns and Hydras, they will come straight at you. Very rarely will they go and hide. They'll come straight at you and they hit hard. They can teleport, meaning that the patterns of uh, movement aren't predictable. Hive are a little bit different. They're like walking tanks, you know. And same as in Fallen, some of them, wizards especially, you break the shield, they'll they'll run away. Fallen, um, it's taken a very unpredictable in their movement, but they they will congregate and cover, meaning that they can be picked off once you let them set all the movement. But once they start coming towards you, that glitchy teleport stuff, that's when you can be in trouble. But only in trouble if you never spec for it. So having an idea of the area that you're going to be going into, whether you've been in there before, I would take it if you're going to solo anything, you need to have working knowledge of the activity. And you obviously have an idea of the enemies, but I think a lot of people don't really take the enemies into consideration when they come up with builds because you're that used to doing it in fire teams that... It doesn't really matter because fire's coming in from three places where when you're doing solo work, you are the fire team. You have to take it all into consideration. And once you start doing it, it becomes second nature. You don't think about it after. It's just part of your, your way of thinking. It also helps you dictate your subclass, your weapon loadout, your mods. There aren't many areas in the game where you're going to come up against something that isn't the same as everywhere else. But every area, every activity has a, a level of uniqueness to it. And what I mean by that is, let's, ju let's just take this week's GM, which we'll, I'll probably will be using for examples. The whole area, I class it into four rooms. The first three rooms are all kind of close quarters. 
you're not going to have ads pushing you in any location. Uh, burst damage is key. But then when you get to the boss, you can do everything from a relative range until the boss becomes enraged and then the boss will come after you. So it, it, I, I find a lot of bosses in Destiny work like this now where the boss works within the same premise as the rest of the mission, but slightly different. You know, so having a working knowledge of the activity the enemies allows you to spec properly for the for the the incoming uh challenge so even if you haven't done it going to do a strike if you've never done the gm go and do the strike you can get to see the way the ads behave yes they'll hit harder in gms and you'll have slightly more enemies but uh you'll have an idea of the area and to be fair unless you're a complete beginner most of us know most of the activities so you already have that working knowledge so that is the first point is knowing what challenge you're preparing to spec for the second thing i do which sometimes these next two take the longest is knowing the right subclass to use now i've heard people say you need to master all the subclasses in destiny to be a good solo player that's complete rubbish you do not need to master all subclasses to become a good solo player Subclasses for me are broke up into three sections, right? Well, actually four if you really think about it. So you have an ad clear super, you have a boss DPS super, you have a defensive super, and then you have uh, a neutral game because nearly now these these things might overlap. But if you take, for example, this season, uh, Arc Warlock has the best Arc neutral game. But that's because of the artifact. It's it's helping the arc neutral game to perform, overperform. Arc Hunter has a great neutral game. Solar Titan has a great neutral game. But if I wanted to be, a, a, say, the Titan, for example, if I wanted to be on a, a more defensive, I would go Bubble Titan, right? If I wanted real strong boss DPS, uh, I would go uh, uh, Arc Titan with Thunder Crash, with the Cuirass of the Fallen Star. You know, the best single hit damage super the, hunter ha the Titan has to offer. So, but then I would be saying to myself, okay, well, you know, I need this, I need this. Uh, what's the neutral game like? Because, you know, I'm going to need my abilities. How fast can I regenerate them? So what super am I going to use? What, what uh, exotic is you... Synergy is very, very important in Destiny 2. Using the right exotic to go with with your uh, subclass is key. Now, if you're using, let's just say you're using Solar Warlock and you've decided you're gonna you're just gonna live and die by Phoenix Protocol, then it's just something I never do. Because you can't act when they nerf it like it has never happened. Like they've never done that. The minute something becomes you know, too dominant. Bungie has got to take into consideration the feelings of the other exotics. So they'll they'll change it. And then all of a sudden the only build you've been using for a year is no longer is non existent. I think the tagline for this is knowing other people as intelligence. Knowing yourself is true wisdom. So what what that kind of means is knowing your subclasses and, and not just, I've seen this in a video and it worked because it might have worked for that person. It doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Know what subclass plays into your playstyle. It doesn't matter. And I know people are going to be saying, yeah, that's the point of learning. But there are some things you just can't learn. It doesn't matter. Uh, I, I, that's wrong. Some things are more difficult to learn than others. And, and the whole point of this guide is there isn't just one subclass for each activity. There are multiple subclasses that can be used for each activity. If you are less efficient with a single subclass, then learn how to make another subclass work in its place. But 
during the kind of the downtime, you should be trying to become better with that subclass because having mastery over a, a bunch of subclasses is the key to becoming a good solo player. Use the right tool for the job. But you shouldn't be tied. You have to use this for this activity because you don't, because multiple subclasses can work in multiple activities. It should, the subclass that you use in the neutral game, you know, do you need abilities? Do you need grenades for ad clear? What sort of ads are you facing? Do they bunch up? Are they single fire ads? Do they run away and hide? You know, can I get them all inside something like a pulse grenade? Or do I need like, you know, something different? These are all key decisions. Now, for most of you, you'll already be thinking about this stuff when you're going to do your seasonal activities or you're going in to do patrols or you're going in to do raids or gambit. But to do it on a bigger scale, which is bring your mods into play, bring, you know, how are orbs of power going to uh, uh, affect my player? What mods do I need to have on? Uh, am I going to have two builds which are exactly the same, except I'm changing the boots on the second loadout to have three surges that match my, my heavy weapon for, say, dungeons or raids? How then do I acquire armor charges and don't use them how can i save armor charges for the boss damage very simple you put on the the yellow it's a, it's a finishers give you health on your class of item and just don't have any other mod on that uses armor charges so no surges no nothing no uh kick starts no nothing just that and when it's time to do it, you'll see there on the screen, I've got three armor charges I'm not using because I've got no mods on that will use them. So when it comes to boss damage against the ogre, I will switch because I'm only switching one thing, which is the boots. I will switch loadouts. I've kept all my fragments and aspects exactly the same because if you have, that's why I say save the loadout in two, set, two, two separate uh, things because it keeps all the fragments and aspects the same over both loadouts because uh, if you change any of those, you'll lose your super and abilities when you switch. Just becoming accustomed to play outside your comfort zone, because if you can play outside your comfort zone and become comfortable, then you don't have an out of your comfort zone. So the, the second part is master of your classes. Know what, what's going to work best because of the activity. The, the third thing, and this I'm going to spend probably the most time that probably the most time on is your weapon selection. So in your weapon selection, this is the one I personally struggle with the most. You know, and when I say struggle with, I know just about what every weapon in Destiny 2 does. I would say my knowledge of the perks and how exotics work is is, is pretty top tier. Because I've I've spent time playing with the weapons and using them. But getting the right weapons. Sometimes you need weapons to do multiple jobs inside of something. You know. I, it's always where where I'd say it takes me the longest to work out runs. But it's my favourite part. Because it's the, does this work? Does it not work? So you already know what activity you're coming in to do. You know what subclass you're going to use. Now, I've, as I've said, this takes me the longest, but you've already done all of the planning that you need to work out what weapon you're going to use. Because are you going to... So you're, you're fighting against a uh, hive. You're in a master nightfall, so you know that you're... You know that uh, you're going to be dealing with overload ogres. So even just because you're dealing with uh, unstoppable ogres... Even though you're yes, unstoppable ogres, you already know you're dealing with ogres. So you know you're going to have that tank unit that's going to be shooting you from a reasonable distance. Uh, what weapons are intrinsically unstoppable? It's, it's a problem I've had a long time with Destiny is they still, even though they're giving us a little bit more, it's like, it's like they give us back a little bit of what they sold us. I still feel like they're, they're stealing our options. Because I don't like the fact that I have to use what they dictate needs to be used instead of me me picking what I want to be overload and unstoppable. I'm too much freedom, I suppose, too much choice. But your loadout should obviously follow the activity. 
follow the subclass. Sometimes your weapons will synergize with your subclass. So if you're using a void, whatever, and you've got grenades cause your void weapons to have volatile rounds, you'll then want to spec into that for your ad clearing weapons. You'll maybe put void siphon on so that double kills with void weapons produce orbs. And then you might want to put something on that uses those orbs for getting health back, grenades back, maybe picking up an orb gives you devour. Making sure you take advantage of your loadouts. Make sure they synergize. Make sure they're doing more than one job for you. If you're doing a nightfall, then you've got to come up, you know, you, you, you'll you have problems that you've got to come up with solutions for. That's basically what solo work is and, and using these three steps. It helps you come up with solutions. Follow the three steps and they will answer most. They'll give you answers for your, for your problems. Because that is, you, once you've solved enough problems, you've soloed them, what you need to solo, you know? And repetition is key. But as I say, picking weapons that can do more than one job, is that weapon going to be good for, you know? The other thing about when you're, when you're working out the activity is, you know, uh, based on your weapons is, do they add single file at me? Are they all, are they all single targets? You know, are these, these, uh, are these enemies coming in, in, in bulk? You know, do I need... I, I played with someone once that had a machine gun, an auto rifle, and an SMG on, which is effectively the same sort of weapon, just with varying degrees of damage. But the, none of them are multi-kill weapons. They're all single-target weapons. Even with good perks, they're still single-target weapons. Whereas having a weapon like, say, a Wayframe Grenade Launcher that can take out multiple enemies every time you fire it, with the right perks is key. Just just being able to spec your loadout properly. If you're taking what if you're doing a nightfall, two champions in there, have you got an ability that can stop a night uh, a, a champion? Can you get that ability back fast enough? And if so, you can then take a weapon in that is not linked to that activity but will do a job. Shotgun, fusion rifle, e Jesus, the weather horde, you know, anything. Specking for the activity, specking for the challenges in front of you also means, you know, if you've got a bunch of weapons that you like to use, they might not do. So just if you're doing seasonal activities, you're doing this, that, the next, and something that is just like a chill activity doesn't really take a lot of planning. Try using weapons that are outside your comfort zone because you never know. One of those weapons could become your new next best friend. You won't know until you try. And saying you're no good with weapons is kind of just like saying, I haven't used them enough to be comfortable with them. You Only you can change that. And if you're really interested in becoming a better player, not just a better solo player, just a better player. I mean, all these things work for PvP as well. You know, specking your weapons to suit the map. The map will dictate the, you know, because you've got an idea of waves of attack because you've played this map before and the fight normally happens here. Will my abilities be good here? Will this subclass be good for ag control or whatever? These, these things work in all facets of the game. So pick your weapons wisely to match your subclass and your mods and your plan. So the final step is, I think I've already said this, it's the simplest step to explain, but it is possibly the most important, is mentality. Now, I think the tagline that I've used for this sums up perfectly. You never lose. You either win or you learn. That is the biggest problem that I see with people and the biggest thing people say to me about solo, and, and it really is, there's a lot of things people say to me about, you know, oh, it was amazing, that solo, or how did you do that? Or, is, I couldn't do it, I don't have the patience. And then maybe two days later or whatever, I'll see that they've been reading that day for seven hours. And it's like, well, how can you not have the patience for an activity when you spent seven hours on a different activity? What they're really saying is, I don't have confidence in myself, I'm not really sure how to do it and I don't want to fail a bunch of times because then I'll feel like I've wasted my time. You you will always learn more about an activity by failing because failing teaches you what doesn't work and the amount, 
you can only fail so many times before you think to yourself, I'm an idiot, I've been using the wrong thing constantly here, or, oh, right, so this will work here, that will work, let's go and try it. So here, th this is really, this is the part of the video where I wouldn't be able to make a different video on this, this is just all the writs. If you have decided, right, I'm doing this, I'm going to do a solo dungeon, then the dungeon that you can see me doing is the one to do, because you can actually leave this one and come back to it. As long as you never load in with anyone else, you will still get the emblem for the solo. What you have to say to yourself is, right, I'm going to give this, I'm going to give this a bit of time, we'll see how it goes. If the thing is getting on top of you, then limit your time. Walk away, turn the computer off, reset the AI. Because sometimes the AI, if you constantly keep going in, it takes seven or eight runs before the AI resets itself and, ha and then forgets your style of play. So turn the computer off, go and get a cup of coffee, go and speak, disengage your mind. And while you're away, you might think about this and it might reinvigorate you, you know. But don't worry about failing. Failure is all part of winning. Never go into an activity thinking you're just going to complete it. Go into an activity thinking you're going to learn how to do this. Oh, and that is just the way it's going to be. And there you go, guys. Thank you very much for listening and watching. If you do want to see more in-depth versions, let me know in the comments. Enjoy the video, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.